Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Sandra Mom. Um, I know it's been a couple of weeks, but it's been a bit challenging. And before I begin, I just want to uh, give a disclaimer here that what I'm about to talk about is difficult and it can be triggering for some people. So I um, just wanted to say that it can be triggering. I'm going to give you an update of where Ben is today and what has gone on over the last few weeks. I feel that this is really important for me to share as I know that if it wasn't for the work I've done on myself and the self-care and all the tools that I've gained over the last few years, uh, I know that I would have dealt with this situation a lot differently. And that is my main uh my main uh, topic, the main reason I'm sharing this is that self-care is not selfish. Self-love is uh, a priority for me uh, because it keeps me in a good mental health state. As you may know, Ben's been working on himself since March. Uh, he's gone to treatment. He's been working really hard he's had relapses slash what he calls glitches but he always got back up and with all this being said I know it's been really difficult for him he's been really diligent in making regular phone calls uh, daily uh, in some cases and weekly in other cases because he's on a number of waiting lists so these are all positives uh, you know so I'm sharing this because He's doing the work and as I've said and I will continue to say I re I, I support recovery um, although he's done all this it's it's still been a struggle but one day at a time one minute at a time uh, as you know if you've been following us over the years Ben has had over 50 overdoses and some of them were multiple overdoses in in one day sorry there's a hair here um, his last overdose was different than past overdoses and again this may be triggering for some it was different for me as well uh, this time his intention was different it wasn't an accidental overdose or drug poisoning he knew what he was doing and he almost succeeded with his intention Due to a number of circumstances, someone saw him and called 911 and saved his life. Let me tell you, this scared the crap out of me. You know, for me as a loved one, and I'm sure there's many out here that can relate as loved ones, there's that fear of that dreaded call in the middle of the night. Well, I got one of those calls and I'm so grateful that I've been working on myself and the dreaded call Ben was still alive. Um, the officer that called me found him and said he had just been discharged from the hospital and he was sleeping outside. So he was calling me to see if I could uh, pick him up and have him stay at my place. Again, this is where my tools came in. And thankfully, because I was in a good state of mind, because I have been working my tools and I have been taking care of myself, I was able to discern that Ben was alive because I could have been freaking out from the minute he told me he was a constable. Um, he was alive, he was with the officer, and I was able to say, no, he can't come to my place. I figured the worst case, he spends the night in jail or the officer, he's with an officer. And uh, I didn't know all the details at this time but I was able to go back to sleep. For me, self-care means not living in fear or panic because, because I'm in a good mental state, I'm able to make decisions during uh, what can be a very anxiety-ridden phone conversation. The next morning, Ben called me. He wanted me to pick him up. He told me what happened and he also told me he was in pain because of his ribs and I know that is from being resuscitated 
again, because of my tools and my self-care, I didn't go rescue him. In the past, I probably would have gotten off the phone and said, I'll be there in minutes. But my tools kicked in. I didn't rush out to get him, knowing what happened and that he was in pain. I sat with it and I processed everything. I didn't rush out. I had to discern what I was going to do and how I was going to deal with this. I do know that it had to be his choice, whatever was going to happen. I couldn't make the choice for him. I, I believe that I can't control him and I believe this is his journey and he's an adult. Even though all this stuff has happened, as a mom it tears my heart out, but I know that he needs to make these decisions himself. So for me, I had to know if I was going to pick him up. First of all, I, had to, I told him I would only pick him up if he had somewhere to go and that I support recovery. In the end, it was his choice. I know for me, there were a number of tools that I used in those moments uh, that really helped me to be succinct in what I was saying to him. My self-care, my working on myself, my sticking to my boundaries, calling a friend for support and just talking it out. For me, it was being mindful and intentional and not in a fury. I gave myself the time and grace to do what I needed to do for myself in that moment. This also helps me in living with no regrets. I've said this in the past, we know that addiction can be fatal and it, this has been the closest for me in dealing with something so dramatic, for lack of a better word. I am living with no regrets because I am doing everything I know I can do without enabling. I want to be helping him without enabling. He needs to be doing more work than I am. Now I did do a video helping versus enabling which I'll link up below in case you're interested in more information in knowing what the difference is between helping and enabling. So. What I decided for myself in that moment is if he didn't have a plan, I wouldn't pick him up. I reminded him how much I love him and that I will always support recovery. In the end, he chose recovery and went to detox. I never told him what to do. I kept my boundaries. As much as it hurt my heart, it's not easy, but I will always support recovery. He chose recovery. Again, although he wanted to unalive himself, he felt hopeless. He questioned why he survived. Ben has lost a number of friends and he, it's like the remorse of being alive. Why is he still alive and his friends aren't? And that is something that he will have to work through and I, I say to him, Ben, you're here for a reason. There is a purpose. Um, I can't tell him what that purpose is, but slowly I hope that a new Ben uh, emerges and he figures it out because he matters. He matters to me and he matters to hundreds of people that love him. I'm so glad he chose recovery. Today, there is breath and remember where there is breath, there is hope. Thanks for watching. Much love to you all. Take care. Where there is breath, there is hope. Thank you.